Flavia Tata Nardini. She's the co-founder and CEO of Fleet.Space, a firm with an ambitious plan to make the skies above the natural home for IoT networks. Please welcome Flavia. Hi, everyone. I want to build drones now. I'm very excited. OK, satellites oof, might have to change business plan. They're doing an awesome job. So now we go a bit higher. Uh, we talk about nano satellites and what they are doing in IoT. So I'm the CEO of the co-founder of the company. And let me tell you what happened, what's happening in our life and what happened the past two years and what's going to happen in the next five. So fleet. We are in a mission to connect everything, and this is what we want to do. We are in IoT Summit, so this is exactly what everyone wants to do, I guess. Let me show you how we're going to do it. connect everything sounds like an easy task, but it's not. The 75 billion devices that everyone talks about, there are a lot of devices. These number keep changing and I have to keep updating the video because it goes up and down, depending on the connectivity solutions. There are people doing a lot of connectivity things out there, but most probably are gonna spend double the world GDP if we wanna connect all those 75 billion devices. So it needs a bit of a change in the way we approach this. You know, it's a massive market. It's a nine trillion market, whatever, okay? But it's a market that needs to be unlocked. I mean, what we always say, that today IoT is a total mess. I mean, we are here, and we lo all lo love IoT. I've been in IoT for many years, and it is a mess. And it's a mess that needs to be unlocked. And the mess comes from the fact that there are a lot of key players, it's a complex ecosystem, and the connectivity is a very big issue from the scale we are talking about. Um, all the solutions that are there are okay for now, but now are not okay for 75 billion devices. They are okay now using Wi-Fi, Bluetooth. They are okay using Sigfox in the cities and using LoRa. But then eventually, the world is a big place. And Internet of Things is something that's gonna cross borders, cross oceans, be in the supply chain. So this is where we decided to kick in from space, okay? Um, the big issues is infrastructure cost for us. Uh, satellites, okay, we will talk about satellites. To cover the entire world, where every Internet of Things devices, a particular industrial Internet of Things will be, it's a very expensive exercise, okay? We have spent the past 20 years building 3G, 4G, terrestrial infrastructure, satellites. We spent hundreds of billions of dollars, and we connect something like 40% of the population, even less. And now we are pushing the world to connect 75 billion devices, okay? The world is very unconnected. Did you know this, okay? So 3G, 4G, all these white things you see are very unconnected. And you know what Sigfox is trying to do is connect cities heavily, all the population, but what about industrial IoT? What is gonna happen with industrial IoT where there is no solution for it? So, that's where space kicks in, and that's where my expertise is. So I worked at European Space Agency for many years, and then I met my husband, he's from Adelaide. So I'm stuck in Adelaide, okay? <laughs> it's a city in South Australia, okay? It's lovely wine, beautiful things, okay? We got kids, and you know, everything worked out quite nicely, okay? But they're little, so still, <laughs> a lot of work to do. But listen, the reality is, I was working on these nano satellites when I was in Europe. I was actually launching them to Mars. This is my expertise, okay? For, you know MBN? You know MBN, 
these big satellites, okay? It's a very expensive exercise. It's, uh, you know, $600 million to build, many, many years to produce, a billion dollars to launch, and you cross fingers, it doesn't explode, right? They are on top of Australia, it's an expensive exercise. Space has been always a very expensive exercise. But in the past 10 years, this has changed completely. New technologies, you know, 3D printing, adv additive manufacturing, all sorts of things are helping us to shrink the satellites to the size of a shoebox. Very, very little. And they are commercially used all over the world. So this is the space where I work in, and this is what we do a fleet. It's like the computers, when they were very, very big, now they're becoming very, very small. This is old space, and it's very big, as you can see. And this is connectivity. Ah, oh, this is Fred. Fred the dog. Okay, this is a two unit satellite. It's 10 by 10, 20 by 20. The maximum size is uh, 30 by 20. They are very, very small. They are very, very, very high tech. Fred wasn't really impressed, okay? The real problem is that we, you know, if you try to cover all the world with terrestrial base stations, you know, with LoRa base station, or SIGFO base station, it can get very expensive. And then there is the ocean that I'm afraid you cannot simply attach things in the middle of the sea. So that's where the problem of industrial IoT is. When you see Earth from the top, then suddenly you see everything. So the cost to build this infrastructure is lower. And because these little guys, they're calling what we call low Earth orbit, because they are small and they can stay for a little while there. If you put a big satellite there, it's not gonna last hours. They, for one satellite, we can cover all Earth. For you know, a 500K, a million exercise, we cover all Earth. So satellites <laughs> like that, they are actually very capable when you launch one. We want to launch 100. You saw in the video, they're going crazy around Earth. This is what we are doing. And the reason why we cannot uh, deploy all of them is to get real time, okay? Is, is industrial IoT heavy satellites, okay? Because satellites are not perfect yet for cities buildings, smart cities. This is where other connectivity solutions will do beautifully. But when you start working on remote agriculture in the middle of South America or in the middle of Asia, there is no 3G, there is no 4G, there is no backhaul. And nowadays, with existing satellite solution, you can spend $20 a month for one sensor beeping once a day, and you've got 10,000 cows. That's very expensive. You're not going to do it. So these are all the activities we are doing around the world to lower the cost down to free, free data, to unlock people to start using it. It's smart logistic. I'll give you an example. So nowadays we track with satellites, we track where the ship goes, okay? It goes from Europe, from the port of Rotterdam to Australia, and we track where it goes. It's a very expensive exercise we do with satellites, like your radio metal side and all these big guys, okay? Industrial IoT is actually tracking every shipping container. There are thousands of them on that ship, but it's just not like that. It's tracking thousands of sensors inside any shipping container. This is what our customers are doing right now. So there is this customer that, you know, I always tell the mango story. Mangoes, funnily enough, they need to travel at 18 degrees in the pulp. No one knows this, it's a reality. If they don't do this, they're gonna be rotten and wasted. So there is something like 45% of wastage of mangoes in the world because no one tracks them in the pole. They track, eventually, the temperature outside the shipping container, but funnily enough, this is a two months journey or like a month's journey, so it's just not gonna work like that, okay? So two days, this exercise is going from measuring where the ship is to measuring something like 100,000 sensors in this. This is industrial IoT. And oceans are very unconnected, so how are we gonna do this? We have another client that makes me laugh, okay? They are the biggest environmental company in Australia, and they have a similar partner in the Amazon forest. They measure 200,000 trees for tree growth and carbon analysis, okay, in millions of hectares in Australia. And they do that with people and a caliper. People are in the middle of nowhere, a team of 10, 12 months every year to measure 200,000 trees. It's a very interesting exercise. And we are in 2017, it can't be this way. It has to be fixed. And this is where there is all the interesting exercise of connectivity very expensive, as sensors very expensive. You need to unlock that. Sensors get to go lower price, we heard that, okay? And massive deployments, this is what we like. 
um, space is very complicated. So Fleet is the kind of company you know, that brings agile software development inside of space. So I've got 20 engineers that are constantly in the middle of the field. You know, one of the, these engineers is, is mounting that his solution for trees and he's sleeping in the middle of Queensland without connectivity in a tent. You know, and luckily it's got our satellite mode and so every two days he tells me I'm still alive, okay? But that's how it is. So it's a lot of cows. I was born in Rome, I'm an apartment girl. Okay, so I'm getting to know that cows are very, very important for our world and we need to connect them. That's beautiful, okay? It's a very difficult exercise, okay? Because there are many. You know, I was having this conversation with a European farm and they were like, oh, my cows are around my farm. I've got Wi-Fi. And I'm like, I'm afraid my clients are in the middle of South America and they herd cows with helicopters. So it's a different exercise. Then it's a different solution. It's a very, very, very big area as we're talking about. So, Centaur Ray, all this presentation got a bit messed up, but we launch satellites, this is what we do. So we spend a lot of time in the field, but we do also very interesting things, like launching things. These are very, very little satellites, but they still have to be launched in space. There are similar regulation, it's very complicated. It's not rocket science, or maybe it is, okay? We need to launch with rockets, so Fleet is gonna launch with piggyback, we call it. Nowadays, you can launch with a very big rocket, like Elon, Okay, Elon loves satellite. He's been there three times in the past month. Just saying, okay. <laughs> you know, he's investing a lot of money, so. But what's happening in the world that are companies building rockets for nano satellites to launch my satellites every week in space. It's like a Uber of space. So when you think, oh my God, 100 satellites, she must be crazy. It's gonna take her ages to do that. It's gonna take me six months or eight months to do that because I can launch every week. So this beautiful black guy here, uh, New Zealand. So uh, one of the biggest company in the world is called Rocket Lab with a Kiwi co-founder and other companies 1.2 billion evaluation. But there are some companies even in Australia doing that. This is how we see the world. It's ubiquitous, it's small cost data, it's big deployments. We underestimate what's gonna happen in IoT. Nowadays there are a couple of things that needs to be put in place to unlock it. And when it's gonna be unlocked, it's gonna be an exponential growth. And we will all have to cope with that. On the connectivity side, on the security side, I'm into the connectivity. And luckily enough, we are the one creating the umbrella, so we're kind of leading the ecosystem. It's an ubiquitous solution around the world. We call it 1F, you know, it was, it's an internal joke, okay? I was talking with my employees, and one day I've asked, what is two, 3G stand for? I don't, I don't really, I didn't remember anymore what G stand for. You know, and then I said, it's generation. We are so used to that that it's inside our life, inside our phones, that we don't remember anymore what G stands for. And there was one guy in a conference told me, I know, I hope you'll be so successful and able to integrate connectivity inside every, every sensor in the world that you're gonna create one F. And in five years, people will say, oh, we are five F, what was F for? And I always say, oh, that was Fleet, that crazy girl connecting everything. And this is what we do. Thank you so much. Thank you.